two cobras and sloppy tears. I am a crier. I'll cry at the smallest of sadness, the most minute of joys. My wife, Pat, however, is not a crier, she is neither maudlin nor sentimental. In the 40 plus years that I have been blessed to know her, she has cried perhaps a score of times. She does not cry at weddings. She does not shed tears of joy. She does not cry over little things. Hugh Tripoli made my wife cry. How? By being born. Mid-March of 1990, Pat became pregnant. The night before I went under the knife to correct my infertility. Hilarious! Less than a month later, her younger sister followed suit. And while there was much joy, she shed no tears. Pat started a new job with Atlantis, Georgia's Consolidated Benefit Services early that April, and come June, she received an outstanding initial job review. In July, she was starting to show, and she informed CBS that she was pregnant. They promptly terminated her. Georgia was a right-to-work state and could terminate without cause. America! With Pat's job loss, we lost around 60% of our income, we also had to have two cobras, the one she had when she left Cigna for herself. Pregnancy is a pre-existing condition, and therefore we already had one. And the CBS plan for me and future non-pregnant, non-pre-existing condition, Pat. Two cobra payments were expensive, but Pat knew she could find a job. July, her eldest sister's kids came down from New York for a visit, and she took them for a bike ride. Pat became dehydrated and went into premature labor. I hurried home from work and we rushed to the hospital. The doctor was able to stop her labor with oxytocin, an anti-contraction drug that she had to continue to take for the remaining four months of pregnancy. A pregnancy the doctor told her would end in birth within 48 hours of her getting off the oxytocin. She was ordered to remain on bed rest and to use a monitor that she applied daily to her belly that hooked up to our phone. This allowed her OBGYN to see how our baby was doing. Obviously, the job search was greatly hindered. On Thanksgiving Day, the OBGYN said she was far enough along in her pregnancy that she could stop taking the oxytocin, and we expected to be parents before the weekend ended. We weren't. On December 14th, Pat's sister Carrie called to share the great news of Hugh's birth. Pat was truly happy for her sister, but the hormone soup and the struggle of pregnancy, financial ruin, pain of the present, and fear of the future was too much for her. And my beloved stoic goddess wept. And between racking sobs, moaned and stuttered, C -c -c carry her baby! <laughs> it was the most beautiful sloppy crying I have ever seen. 21 days after ending the oxytocin, Pat called me at work and said I needed to come home because she was going into the hospital. Nope, not in labor, just that our son Kevin was so big that he was cutting off the umbilical cord and they had to induce her. Early on 1222, the Pitocin did its job and after uttering the words, Holy Toledo, our 10 pound, 10 ounce baby was delivered vaginally. She didn't cry, but I did.